Hello, and welcome to the shop. My name is John. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to be talking about the ongoing ammo shortage and just kind of my thoughts on the whole thing. All right, so this is actually take two. Uh, I filmed this entire section, uh, and then I unfortunately lost the video, so hopefully I'm a little more polished this time around. All right, so the idea for this video uh, kind of came from a conversation I had today. So I hung out with uh, some of my friends today. I think there were five of us there. And um, we had this discussion, and as a couple of us are, are gun guys, you know, the conversation kind of drifted in that direction. Uh, everybody that was there was at least tangentially interested in firearms. So we had a couple guys that were, were, were hunters, uh, one guy that was a pretty serious in the competition, another guy that kind of just dabbles, just likes to shoot, and another guy that was just starting to shoot. Um, maybe three, four months ago we got serious about it. Um, and, and me. So we were sitting around and once we drifted into talking about guns, inevitably very heavily to ammo. So like I said, not everybody there had the same interest level or experience. And one one guy who I said is just getting into the hobby, um, he's, he's pretty fluent. Um, he owns his own company, he, he's well off. He sees no problem with going and paying a dollar a round for 5.56. So even though I feel gouged, um, you know, if I had to buy if I had to buy some of this Lake City 556, I would, for a dollar a round, I would just feel absolutely gouged. He sees no problem with that. Um, a couple guys in the group um, would never think about ever spending that kind of money uh, just to recreationally plank or train. So we drifted into this talk about ammo and how tough it is to get ammo. And I just kind of sat back and absorbed most of it. And I, and I thought about what they were talking about. And I interjected occasionally. But I started to like form this idea in my mind. I started to think to myself that, you know, there's actually a few upsides to the ammo shortage. And there's a there's a solution to it, right? It's a long-term solution. It's not a tomorrow thing. Right? I'm not gonna lie to you. The next six months or maybe year, 18 months, uh, are gonna suck. So as we were sitting there talking about it, we kind of came up with the idea that if you wanna shoot, there's only really two short-term fixes. So, and I'll just say right now, even though I reload, I love reloading, uh, I love casting my own bullets, that is not a good fix to somebody that doesn't already do it. Because if you go to the sporting goods store, primers, powders, bullets, impossible to get right now. So I'm, I'm just gonna not even include that. So if you don't reload already, or, or you do reload and you can't get components, that's not a fix. So of these two ways to get ammo, um, there's two simple ones, right? You can either spend uh, a lot of money, and pay these exorbitant markup prices. You know, maybe that's 75, 85, 95, a dollar a round for 556. Um, the guy said he spent 58 cents a round for a nine millimeter Winchester white box. Ouch, that hurts. You know, as a long-term long -term shooter, that hurts. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely just pony up the money, but I realize not everybody can do that. The other option is you can wait in line, right? Uh, sporting goods stores all over the country. It's cold outside, you know, it's February. Uh, you can drive by any of them when they open, and there's like a line a block long for people to get in there in the in just the hope. Right? They have this hope, uh, almost this religious feeling that they're gonna get through those doors, and by the time they get back to the shelves, there's gonna be that one box of nine millimeter, and they're gonna be able to grab that, and pick that up off the shelf. And there's there's not a short term fix for that, but I really was more interested in the other side of the conversation. It got brought up that in the last 30 days, there's been roughly 2 million people that had the NCIS background check, right? They went to a dealer, an FFL, they filled out at 4473, 4473, they called it in. 2 million. Now, now that's not 2 million new gun owners, okay? And that doesn't necessarily even mean for 2 million guns. Because remember, when you fill out a 4473 and that gets sent in, the NCIS background check, that just shows that you are capable um, and you're not on some restricted list where you can buy a firearm. So if you're not on that restricted list, I think they generally assume you bought one gun. And I think it's fair in two million transactions. There were several of those where more than one gun got purchased uh, on, that, on that same 4473. So at least two million guns got sold. And I think it's fair to say that a certain percentage, and I don't know what that percentage is, but a certain percentage were new shooters, right? Maybe as many as, like, let's, let's just put on the low end. Let's say that 200,000, 10% of that 2 million were brand new shooters, and this is their first gun. And when I say new shooter, I don't necessarily mean somebody that's never handled a gun before, or maybe somebody that's, you know, maybe they even own a gun, 
right? Maybe grandpa or an uncle gave them that Ruger 1022 that's been sitting underneath their, their bed for the last 20 years. But for all practical purposes, they're a new shooter. Somebody that was not interested or engaged in the community prior to the last few months. Those of us that are established gun owners um, and firearm enthusiasts, or, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna actually throw that out the window because maybe we're not even firearm enthusiasts because there's a, there's a number of shooters, I know personally, that, that shoot for other reasons than enjoyment. Now, I think shooting guns is a ton of fun. I think most of you probably do too if you're YouTubing it. There's certainly a portion of the population that only shoot because they hunt. You know, maybe they've got grandpa's 30-30 and they shoot two deer a year, every year. Um, you know, a box of 30-30 might last them a decade. In that case, they're probably not very heavily affected by the whole ammo shenanigans that are going on now. There's also another portion of the, the greater community where they're only interested in firearms as tools. You know, maybe they don't even enjoy going to the range and shooting, but you know, maybe uh, it's terrible, but it's the truth. Something bad happened to them in the past, um, you know, that put their life in jeopardy, or maybe they weren't necessarily in danger, but they at least uh, realized the potential for danger was there. So they went out and they bought themselves a firearm, uh, they got their concealed carry, uh, they got just enough training to become comfortable with the platform that they that they purchased. And now they only shoot for maintenance reasons, right? To keep up their skills so that, you know, God willing, it never happens. But if something terrible happens to them, they're able to defend themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. It, it's a big community and you don't have to be interested in every part of it. But put yourself in a new shooter's uh, shoes for just a minute, right? So uh, they went through their life, uh, however old they may be. We're never interested in it. Um, you know what? Let, let's not even use that. Let's use let's use a hypothetical person, right? Thirty-five year old mom, mother of mother of three. Um, you know she's not anti-gun, um, but she's never had a, seen a need for them, right? She's gone through her whole life, never really got engaged in the culture, but never really had strong opinions one way or the other, until 2020 happened. Lots of people have formed strong opinions in 2020. So in 2020 this hypothetical mother of three, um, she determined that, hey, you know what? Maybe I should have a way to defend myself. More power to her, right? I'm seeing more and more and more ladies at concealed carry classes. Uh, well over 50% in the last few I've taught have been, have been women. So that, that's awesome. Support the community, the industry needs that. So once again, we're putting ourselves in her shoes, right? She goes to that sporting goods store, lo and behold, they have a Glock 19. You know, she does a little bit of internet research, Glock 19, good to go. They, they sell her that Glock 19, but they only can sell her one box, 50 rounds of Winchester White Box practice ammo, okay? She's gonna buy it. Um, you would too, and I would. Uh, anybody watching this channel, you know, if you were in Walmart and they had nine millimeter ammo, we'd buy it. She goes home with her brand new Glock 19 and her 50 rounds of ammunition. You know, probably comes with three 15 round magazines. You no, know, once you top those up, you know, she's only got five rounds, five rounds, you know, to, to drop in a drawer or to, you know, wherever, in a dresser to lose forever. That person, that, that demographic, that fraction of a 1% of gun shooters, that new owner, uh, she does not have the capacity to go train, right? Even if, even if she is very serious about it, she can't go out and get training because she only has 50 rounds of ammo. And, you know, you've got those three magazines. They've got to stay full with that practice ammo. So that's where I'm at with this. So when I said that I don't think it's bad, um, and I think that the solution is right in front of us, and that is uh, this divide we have. So uh, if I use my, my nearly empty beer cans here, right, this is middle of the road. This is us, uh, the gun community as a whole. And yeah, we're fractured and we hate each other, 1911 guys and Glock guys, but we're all pretty well entrenched on one side, right? We don't intentionally vote our rights away. Like we understand the laws, um, we do our due diligence. Um, for the most part, we're upstanding members of the community. Uh, we're gonna vote a certain way. The middle of the road, you know, they don't have strong opinions one way or the other, right? They can be swayed by being scared, um, anything. And then there's this other side here and they might not necessarily be bad people, um, but they are vehemently anti-gun. So either something happened to them in the past or they've been doc indoctrinated through school and TV that guns are evil and you know we can legislate away violence, uh, which is just a silly notion, right? We, have, we can't legislate away violence to, to each other. 
So as long as we can agree on that, that's a silly proposition to me. Um, I would argue that all day long. It doesn't matter. We're not winning over this side of, of the population. But there's a hell of a lot more people here in the middle that don't care one way or the other. Uh, it doesn't affect their daily lives one way or the other uh, which camp uh, wins politically. Okay, that gets to make the laws. So if a certain portion, a couple hundred thousand of pe these people that probably fell into this middle section uh, bought guns for the first time in February 2021, well, hey, that, that's awesome. And that's also the long-term fix to the ammo issues, right? They're, those people are not going to vote their rights away once they understand the culture and they understand the significance. We want those people on our side, right? But it's really hard to get engaged with anything if you don't have the opportunity to do it. Uh, it'd be hard to be a skydiving enthusiast uh, if you never got into a plane. If there's no fuel and you could never get into a plane, uh, you might still be interested in skydiving, um, but you wouldn't form strong opinions about it. Bad analogy, I know, but that, that's all I can come up with off the top of my head. So we're getting more people potentially into this pool, our side of the aisle, um, the right side of the aisle. So in the last six months, we've had this huge influx of people that potentially, right, these new gun owners, um, they could be in our camp, right? And I think it's our responsibility, just like in any community, to foster that new population. So I'm not telling you right now, don't, you don't need to be a charity bank. You don't need to go give away ammo. We really need to think about that group of potential allies going forward. And I know I promised the solution to the ammo shortage, and I'm getting there, right? It's all going to tie in here, right? So once we get enough people on our side of the board, right, we don't have to worry about every election there being a ban or there, there being this constant fear in the air, right? Uh, the hoarding will, will slow down. It's not going to stop. You're always going to have guys that fill their garages with millions and millions of rounds. And I got no problem with that, right? That's capitalism at its finest. And that's also what's going to fix the ammo shortage in the long run. We get enough people in our camp that we're no longer worried about our rights being legislated away. And if we don't have to worry about the elections, then the, the panic buying goes down. Then there's the other side of this, the long-term fix, and it's awesome. It's great for us as a community, right? Our buying power will go up. Um, so whether that's guns, especially ammo, you know, or just other related accessories to guns, right? The more people we have in our camp, the better it is for the industry, which is better for the shooters. CCI can't make enough 22 long rifle ammo right now. Uh, I have a buddy that works there. Uh, he tells me they're running full tilt uh, basically all the time. Like when a machine goes down, oh my God, uh, they, they're trying to get it up because they make money. Right? Like I said, capitalism will fix the, is going to fix this problem long term. So we get enough people in this camp, we're going to spend more money as a community. Um, that would be a really, really big encouragement for these ammunition and um, component manufacturers to produce more of them on a regular basis, to have, to have more of a capacity to produce them in large quantities. I live in Nebraska. It probably would be a hard sell right now to say, Hornady, by golly, you should open up a brand new manufacturing plant, right? Because it's really risky right now. I mean, they don't know what... what down the road, three years from now, their entire business model might be destroyed if we have to register individual rounds. Right? So they're not going to invest millions of dollars in new equipment and new facilities to produce a product that's in demand now, but they won't be able to provide for six months or a year. They're just not going to. But if we get enough people in our camp, I'm telling you, Hornaday is not stupid. They are going to produce more ammo if the demand for it on a day-to-day -day basis is there. How do we foster all these new shooters? They shoot, right? Shooting is a ton of fun. <laughs> um, so once again, not a charity thing. Don't give ammo to people. What I do encourage you to do is uh, that guy that you sit at with lunch and every every once in a while you talk about rifles or, or shotguns or, or shooting or whatever, go to the range with that guy, right? Uh, let him shoot your gun. Uh, you know, you shoot his gun, um, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, you might have to break into your ammo reserves, right? You might have to let that guy fire 200 rounds. And that's just the reality of it. But I think if all of us could be more accommodating to that new shooter, more nurturing, um, I think in the long run, that is the solution to basically all of our problems, Second Amendment problems that we have right now. I know I've been rambling, um, but I hope I kind of got my point across. That's where I stand on this issue. Um, I mean... I don't see another way around this. 
the next six months, maybe the next 18 months are going to suck. Uh, but I think as a community, if we can come together and we can do a good enough job and getting enough people in our camp, maybe it's the optimist in me, but I just see like this silver lining to all of the craziness that's going on. Uh, I mean, it's there. We've, we've never had this opportunity before where there's hundreds of thousands of people just knocking on the door. All we got to do is let them in. So I personally, uh, my pledge is I am going to try at least once a month for the next year, uh, take somebody with me shooting. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that. That's just my own personal pledge. So uh, I live out in the country. Uh, most of my buddies know that they can just come over. I have a shooting range here at the house. It's not that big a deal. But at least once a month, I'm going to take somebody out and we're going to have some fun. Hopefully they'll get something out of it. You know, maybe I can teach them something or make them more comfortable with their platform or, I mean, hell, maybe it'll just be fun. Maybe we'll just plank, you know, we'll shoot some cans and we'll shoot some steel, whatever it may be. But I, I feel like it's a great opportunity for us right now. I hope other people feel that way um, and can kind of do their own little bit, whatever it may be. It doesn't have to necessarily be this, what I'm talking about here, my, my grand plan that's up in my mind. But let me know in the comments below, am I naive? Am I way off base here? Um, is there something I'm missing? Is there something that I don't understand? Is there some other obstacle out there that, um, you know, it's right in front of us and I'm not seeing? Uh, I mean, let me know. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me. I know this was long and I know it was a little preachy and I know I kind of went on a rant, um, but I really do appreciate you hanging out. Um, I hope you have a great night. Uh, I'll see you next time.